The Adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Alice Frost and Joseph Curtin, and brought to you by... Woodbury, 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 for the skin you love to touch. Pamela North, those lovable, laughable solvers of mysteries. For years you've read about them in books and magazines. You've seen them on the stage and on the screen. Now here they are in person in The Adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North. Joseph's is a little Russian restaurant tucked away on one of the side streets of midtown Manhattan. And here we find Jerry and Pamela North just finishing dinner. There's a popular belief among epicures that music has power to aid digestion, but Jerry has some doubt about this. Oh, boy, listen to that fiddle. No wonder there's hardly anybody in the place. Jerry, I want to hear. What? Pam, please, it's dreadful. But, Jerry, that poor fellow's playing with his heart. Oh, that's it. I was blaming it all on the violin. I suppose if a swing band were going full blast, you'd think it was dandy. Well, at least I could keep time while I chewed. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Are you finished? Let's get out of here. All right, dear. A waiter. A waiter. Here, let me help you with the coat, dear. Ah, gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies. It was all to your satisfaction? Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. My wife even likes the music. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Dimitri, enough. Go back to the kitchen. Oh, does he cook, too? Dimitri? Oh, no. He washes the dishes. My wife, she cooks. Oh, are you the proprietor? No, lady. I own the restaurant. Oh. I am Josette. Dimitri is my brother. Vasya is my wife. I see, a family affair. I suppose the girl in the check room is your sister. No, that is not possible. But the doorman, he's my uncle. Vasov. Oh, how nice. Isn't that nice, Jerry? Mm-hmm. Oh, dear, will you give me a uh, coat check? My compact's in your overcoat pocket. Yeah? Well, let's see. Oh, here it is. I'll fix my face while you're paying the check. See you in the lobby, Jerry. Now, uh, gentlemen, let me see. Have you the bill? Oh, yes. Even now, I subtract it. $20. Ah, so. $240. What? Let me see. Perhaps it is wrong. No, no, no. Not very. It's $2.40. But that's Pam. Jerry. I'm coming, Pam. I'm coming. Oh, Jerry, it's terrible. It's well, in terrible. heaven's name, what happened? Look. There in the check room. Where? Over the table. What? Good. Lord. Jerry, I think she's dead. She certainly is. That's a stiletto in her back. We'll rejoin Mr. and Mrs. North in just a moment. But meanwhile, ladies, do you realize for just ten cents you can buy a trial-sized jar of Woodbury cold cream? A cream proved to give as fine or even finer beauty results than the costliest creams. And I mean proved. Proved by a test among more than 1,000 women. These women use six leading creams, including Woodbury Cold Cream and some of the costliest brands you could name. The creams were all in plain, unlabeled jars. Yet the majority of the women picked one cream as definitely best, Woodbury Cold Cream. Actually, they preferred Woodbury even to those costliest creams. Well, here's why Woodbury is so outstanding. Its four special ingredients and its fine oils cleanse thoroughly. Leave your skin feeling gloriously fresh and clean. They lubricate, help ward off aging dryness. They make your skin gorgeously softer and smoother. And besides, there's an element working in the jar to keep the cream absolutely pure. And no other cream at any price has that. Why not send out now for Woodbury Cold Cream? 
If your skin isn't lovelier after using it only seven days, return that jar to Woodbury at Cincinnati, Ohio, and you'll get double your money back. Regular sizes at 25 cents, 50 cents, 75 cents, and a big economy jar at a dollar and a quarter. Remember, Woodbury will save you so much compared with your former expensive cream that you can buy more war stamps and bonds. And Uncle Sam will like that. Tonight, start using Woodbury. That's W-O-O-D-B-U-R-Y, Woodbury Cold Cream. And now, back to the adventures of Mr. and Mrs. North. A few minutes have passed since Pam and Jerry discovered the body of the checkroom girl in the Russian restaurant. Oh, what is to become of us? Please, Mr. Joseph. What can I do? Stabbed here in my own restaurant. All right, Pam. Did you get Bill Wagon, Jerry? Yes, he'll be right over with the homicide squad. Oh, good. Joseph, who is this girl? This girl I do not know. Her name, it is Betty. Is that all you know about her? Oh. But you hired her to work for you, didn't you? No, I did not hire her. She was sent here by the man who has the concession for hats and coats. You mean someone actually paid for the checkroom concession in this place? Why, it can't possibly pay the girl's salary. He did not pay for the concession. He come one day, say, I must let him run hats and coats. I say, no. He say, yes, or he will have my license taken away. Oh, a racket. Why, that's shameful. He's a big man. Lots of politics. Who is he? Charles Moran. Chuck Moran, huh? Jerry, isn't he the man who runs the Club Rue? Yes, and a lot of concessions and hotels and clubs around town. Now I see why he's got a monopoly. I wonder if... Jerry, look, there's a purse hanging on the hook. Uh, Couldn't we go through it? Why, yes, I guess we can. Uh, Wait a minute. Oh, Jerry, be careful. Don't touch her. Don't worry. Look how she fell forward across that little table. I'm afraid Wigan won't find many clues. Why not, Jerry? Whoever did it must have slipped in quickly, plunged that stiletto into her, and gone out just as fast. You don't leave any traces when you work like that. Jerry, I wish you wouldn't say you. Oh, oh, let's see the bag. Uh, Here, we'll put everything on this other table. Wigan don't want to see all this stuff. Well, it's not much. Lipstick, compact. There's a key. Oh, Oh, wait. It's a piece of paper. Oh, a milk bill. Made out to Mrs. Charles Moran, 596 East 54th Street. Apartment 9A. Mrs. Charles Moran? Do you suppose Chuck she... Chuck Moran's wife. His wife? Can it be possible? I'd better go over and find out. Jerry, you're staying right here. Now, Pam, we don't want to make any mistakes. If this is Chuck's wife, he should know about it. If she's not, well, it might be wise to find out what he does know. Well, why don't you phone? Phone? He has no phone. I can never get him. I guess he has a phone, all right. But only the people he wants have the number. Now, Pam, when Wigan gets here, give him all the details. But, Jerry, I don't... Remember, Pam, you're the one who found the body. The body? Here in my restaurant? It's not far from here. I'll be back in ten minutes. Take it easy. I'm coming. Well... Excuse me, is this where Chuck Moran lives? Right. Is he in? Who wants to know? My name is North. Gerald North. Oh, you're a friend of Chuck's? Well, I, I've seen him around town. I'm a publisher. Oh, you publish those detective stories, don't you? That's right. Oh, say, I was just reading that one, um... The Kiss of Death. It's swell. It has been rather successful. Oh, say, come on in. Chuck ain't here right now, but he ought to be along any minute. Thanks. Uh, are you Mrs. Moran? <laughs> Do I look it? Well, uh, uh... No, I'm uh, Francine Laporte. I sing at the Club Rue. I thought you looked familiar. I've enjoyed your singing. Oh, thanks. Well, sit down. The sofa ain't busy. <laughs> Have a drink? Uh, not now, thank you. Well, you better. Chuck may not show for a while. Well, then, I really can't wait. Oh, come on. Sit down. Oh, scat, Pinky. That cat is all over everything. You know, Mr. North, uh, another one of your books I liked was uh, Murder in the Mint. 
Gee, I didn't know who'd done it until the last page. Yes, Herman is a good writer. But uh, what I came to see about was Mrs. Moran. Oh, Betty? Yes, do you know her? One of my best friends. And let me tell you, she's got brains. She can figure out those detective stories where I can't. Her only trouble is money. Money? Yeah, you see, Chuck's the front in the concession business, but Betty runs it. She keeps all the check bills in line, you know, hires them and fires them, and, well, she squeezes the nickels till the buffaloes yell. I see. Yeah, right now she's uh, doing a little trick herself in a little Russian joint because, well, it don't pay to keep a regular girl there. Uh, she and Chuck get along all right, don't they? Why, they... Say, why all the interest in Betty? Oh, nothing, just inquiring. Well, I don't know what you're after, so I ain't going to talk out of turn. You'll have to wait for Chuck. Well, I I really must be going, Miss Laporte. Oh, stick around. I'm leaving in a minute for my act at the club, but uh, we could uh, spend a little time talking uh, about murder stories. You got any new ones coming up? Several. I'm afraid I'll have to go now. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Somebody's going to step on that cat's neck someday, and that'll finish him. Uh, Tell Chuck I call, will you? (laughs) Sure, tall and handsome. (laughs) And uh, drop around the club sometime, huh? I'd be delighted, Miss Laporte. Oh, call me Francie. Everybody does. (laughs) All right, Francie. I'll be seeing you. Okay, big boy. All I can tell you, Bill, that's the way Jerry and I found her. All right, Pam, thanks. The medical examiner's busy in the check room. Maybe he'll turn up something. Mm. Hey, Mullins. Hey, Loot. Bring in that big Russian. You mean the doorman with the full hat? That's right. Mm. Okay, Loot. Jerry didn't seem to think that you'd find many clues, Bill. He said that the way the murderer worked, he oh, wouldn't uh, have time Lieutenant to... Lieutenant Wigan, oh. here's something you might find interesting. What's that, Doc? When I moved the girl's body, I found this menu on the table under it. She was trying to write a message when she died. Yeah. Oh, let's see, Bill. Hmm. Scroll from one end of the card to the other. W-O-M-E-N. Women killed me. Women? Gollies. That means the girl didn't know who her assailants were. If she had, she would have tried to write out their names before she died. You can move the body any time you want, Wigan. The stiletto did the trick, all right. I'm going down and file my report. Okay, Doc. Good night. Bill, I can't believe a woman could be so cold-blooded. They come always, Pam. This girl didn't know who they were, so that rules out friends. Let's see. This way, Cossack. Lieutenant wants to see you. Butchikatovich. Tovarist. Hello. What's your name? It's Vasov, Lut. Were you on the door outside all evening, Vasov? I was, for truly. You see any women come into the restaurant? Women? Yes. Women. Men, too, also. I mean just a party of women, two or three. They must have come in and left immediately. Women, yes. Men, yes. Not very definite, is he? Yes. Think you could identify these women if you saw them? Perhaps yes, perhaps no. Women come, go. Yes, many. Well, I guess it was one of them. All right, Bosov. Going to hold him as a witness, Luz? Yes, take him to headquarters, Mullins. Right. Come on, Cossack. We don't want to lose you. Now, Bill, here's what I think you ought to do. Find out if any of the girls working in these concessions had it in for Betty. Uh, please, and then you... Pam, just a minute. I, I've got to think this thing out. Hello, anybody. Oh, Jerry. What's success? Did you find Chuck Moran? Hello, Jerry. How are you, Bill? Jerry, I'm asking you a question. Did you find Mr. Uh, Chuck? Uh, no, dear, he wasn't home. But I did find out the dead girl is his wife. Chuck's no. wife, are you sure? Yes, Bill. Name's Betty Moran. Where's Chuck? The girl in his apartment said he was due there in a little while. Uh, the girl? Okay, I'll give orders to have him picked up. I'll be back in a minute. Jerry, who is the girl? Uh, Francie. I mean, Francine Laporte. She sings at the Club Rue. Francie. Francie. And is she a redhead, dear? Why, yes. How'd you know? There are red hairs all over your coat. Hairs? Jerry, what were you doing up there? Oh, 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 they came from that cat in the apartment. A cat, huh? Yes, a cat named Pinky. Jerry, you haven't answered my question. What were you doing up there? Oh, nothing. We talked about Moran and his wife and about uh, detective stories. Mm. Detective stories? In the old days, it used to be etching. Now, Pam, for goodness sake. <laughs> oh, you needn't get so flustered, Jerry. Oh, who's flustered? You are, darling. Is she uh, good looking? Mm, in a way. Mm, I see. Do you think she killed Betty? She? 
Well, Pam, whatever gave you that idea? Bill Wigan had a menu with a message that the murdered girl wrote on while she was dying. It said, women killed me. Women? Yes, and, and this, this Francie may be one of them. Well, that doesn't seem possible. Jerry, you're a very poor judge of women. You never can tell when they're lying to you. Now, Pam. Now, come on, Jerry, we're going over to that apartment. I want to talk to Miss Francie Laporte. You can't. She's at the Club Rue by this time. All right, then we'll go to the Club Rue. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> Good table, huh? Uh huh. You can see everything, Jerry. I'm afraid we should have told Bill Wigand where we were going. Bill Wigand is no better judge of women than you are, dear. All I want to do is to talk to her for a few minutes, and I'll be able to tell whether she had anything to do with that murder. I hope this doesn't lead to trouble. Uh, listen, Jerry. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our great pleasure to introduce at this time a delightful singer of French song, Miss Francine Laporte. Hello, oh, she's French. Mm -hmm. From Brooklyn, France. Yes, yes, she is, dear. Jerry, you don't always stare that way when you listen to music. Well, it's a bit different from Dimitri and his fiddle. Well, she's not singing from a heart. Jerry, she sees you. Yes, yes, she does. As soon as she's through singing, I'm going back to her dressing room. We'll both go. Oh, no. You're going to stay right here. I'll be able to judge her better if we're alone. All right, dear, but be careful what you say. Okay, Francie. 63 from the top, boys. You ready? One, two. Hey, Chuck. What's the matter, Francie? You finished already? Listen, that guy north that was up in the apartment? Yeah? He's out front with the dame. I wonder what that log's up to. Well, he's poking around for something, Chuck. If he'd just come to see me, he wouldn't have brought no dame. Yeah, I wonder what... Quiet. Here, get behind the screen quick. Whoever it is, get rid of them. Okay, keep your shirt on. Uh, Miss Laporte, may I see you for a minute? I, um, I got a change for my next oh, number. Oh, it won't take a minute. Will you get out? I haven't got no time to... I'm Mrs. North. Uh, you met my husband, Mr. North, up in Chuck Moran's apartment. Yeah? Well, what do you want? I just want to ask you one question. What did you and my husband talk about tonight? Detective stories. Why? Oh, didn't you talk about who killed Betty Moran? Kill... Killed Betty? Oh, didn't you know she was dead? What are you talking about? Betty Moran was murdered tonight. Hey, what's this all about? Miss Dame says Betty was bumped off. I heard. Where'd you get this from, sister? Uh, well, uh, the police found her. Are you Chuck Moran? Yeah. Who got Betty? Uh, the police are looking for you. Yeah, well, I'm going out looking for the police. If you hadn't called, Francie. Oh, you can wait right here. The police will come for you. Out of the way, lady. Hop to it, Francie. I'm ready, Chuck. You'd better not leave, Mr. Moran. Get away from that door. Ouch! Let me come go. Come on, Chuck, will you? Just a minute. Wait. Jerry, stop them. That's Chuck Moran. Out of the way, jerk. Get back, Moran. Yeah? Sure. Right. Finish him, Chuck. Get out. Get him. Oh, I had to oh, you. Jerry. Here, you. Get away from that phone. Try and stop me. Why, you little... Ow! Oh. Ow! Oh. Ouch! Hello. Give me that phone. Oh. Give me that phone. Oh. The police. Jerry, 
Are you sure you're all right? Yes, dear. Good. I want to look out the back. <laughs> oh, golly. Jerry, you know this is the first ride I've ever had in a patrol wagon. I hope it's not your last. Shut up, Moran. You gonna let him get away with that, Chuck? I'll kick his teeth in. Yeah. Jerry, look out. I'll handle him. Oh, you're gonna oh, bring it. Chuck. Hey, hey, hey pipe down. Him, Jerry. Break it up, I'll him. break it up with my stick. Oh. You'll have plenty of time for shopping when we get to the cooler. As soon as we get there, officer, I want to see Lieutenant Wagon. All right, lady, but quiet down. I can't hardly hear the gong. <laughs> Doc. Oh, Lieutenant Wagon. Came down to the morgue here to take a look at them. Well, there they are, in the trunk. Hmm. Some package. How were they killed, Doc? Bullets through the head. Close range. Crammed in the trunk after death? Right. If one corpse hadn't bled, they might be on the way to California by now. The expressman noticed the blood coming out of the corner of the trunk. Yeah, that's the standard way of getting rid of bodies. Drop them off at the express office and ship them off across the country. Well, Wagon, now you've got two cases on your hands. Any identification on the bodies? No, not a clue on them. Hey, hey, Luke. You got them, Mullins? Yeah. Come on, Cossack, in here. Come on. What's up? Lieutenant, it is not since the days of the time. Just a minute, just a minute. I'm sorry we have to hold you as a witness, Boss Up. But it can't be helped. I want you to take a look at these bodies. Say, uh, Lute. Yes, Norman. Mr. and Mrs. North, they were just brought in. In the wagon. Pam and Jerry? Mm-hmm. For disturbing the peace. Mr. North got into a fight with Moran. They got Moran? Mm. Good. Settle the charges and bring Pam and Jerry down here to the morgue. I done that already. They're coming as soon as Excuse you can speak. Excuse me, is Lieutenant Wagon... Oh, there you are, Bill. Come in, Jerry. He's here, Pam. Come on. Oh, Bill, we've just had the most exciting... <gasps> oh! I'm sorry, Pam. Not a very pretty sight. Good Lord. Who are these men? We don't know yet. How about it, Bosov? You recognize those bodies? These men, I know. Yeah? What? Oh, you do? Where from? The restaurant. The night they go in, come out. Uh-huh. You're positive about that? I see them only two hours ago. A voice off never forgets. They're the ones that done it, Luke. But that note, Bill, the one she wrote, it said women killed me. Yes, it, it doesn't fit. I wonder... Hey, Bill, have you that menu with you? I've got an idea. What, Jerry? Oh, uh, yes, here it is. Huh. Yeah, that could be it, all right. Sure. What, Jerry? Well, look at this menu. See, the girl started the word women right at the edge and wrote across the page. Yes. Now, when she wrote this, remember, she was dying. Things must have been going black for her. Jerry, don't talk so much. Just tell her. What's your idea, Jerry? She started her writing off the edge of the menu. There's a letter missing, a T. A T? Yes. And what do you get when you put a T in front of the word women? To women. <laughs> to women. Oh, Jerry, that doesn't make sense. I see what you mean, Jerry. Sure. Spell it out, Pam. T W O M E N. Two men. Oh, I see. She tried to write, Two men killed me. Of course. Why, how clever of you, Jerry. Well, we've got the two murderers. Yeah, in a trunk. But who got them? Wait a minute. I think I have it. What time? <laughs> yes, sir, those bodies. That's it. Why, Jerry, it's right in front of you and you can't see it. Pam, will you make sense? Bill. Have Mr. Moran and that girl brought down here right away. Well, Pam, you'd better tell us what you're going to do. No, no. This takes very delicate handling. I have to do it my way, Bill. But, Pam... I won't say another word until they're here. All right, Mullins. Bring them down. Come on, come on. Come on. Hey, what's this all about? We're going to find out right now, Moran. Sit down. And you take that chair, Miss... That's uh, uh, Miss Laporte, Bill. Thanks. Close the door, Mullins. Okay, Luke. Now then, uh, Mrs. North is going to ask a few questions. I want them answered. Say, who does she think she is? Let her ask. See what it gets her. Yeah, well, when she's finished, I got a few things to ask. Only it'll be through my lawyer. All right, that's enough. Go ahead, Pam. Uh, well, Mr. Moran, your wife, Betty, was murdered tonight. You said that at the club. I don't know nothing about it. Didn't you sneak into the Russian restaurant tonight and corner your wife in the check room and, and stab her to death? <laughs> You're crazy. I wasn't near the joint. This man I don't see by the restaurant tonight. You see? Quiet, please. Bosov tells the truth. All right, Bosov. Well, he ought to know. I wasn't there. Then where were you? Say, what is she, a woman dick? Answer the questions, Moran. Where were you? Home. 
In my apartment. Jerry, did you see Mr. Moran when you were at his apartment? No, only the girl. That's because you didn't look, fathead. I was out in the kitchen all the time you was there. Ask Francie. That's right, he was there all the time. All right, Mr. Moran. You admit you were in your apartment all evening. Sure, sure, I got an alibi. I can tell you everything that guy said. All right, Bill. Arrest Mr. Moran for the murder of those two men. What? what? Say, what is she trying to hang on she me? She didn't kill nobody. Can you prove this, Pam? Look at the bodies, Bill. Their coats are covered with hair, cat's hair, just like Jerry's was. Those men were killed in Moran's apartment. That's a lie. I was there. Mullins, take care from the clothes of these bodies and get samples from the apartment. Right. If the hairs match, it's going to send Moran and this girl straight to the electric No, car. no, not me. You can't. Shut up, Francis. You can't do this to me. He shot them. I didn't have anything to do with You're it. You crazy ape. Oh, yeah. Oh, he did it. He hired those guys to bump her off. And when they came around to get paid, he shot them. Why did he want to get rid of his wife? She knew too much. The police are looking for three girls that disappeared. Girls that used to work for Moran. I don't know what happened to them, but Betty did. She was going to tell the police because Moran was playing around with me. She was jealous. Why, you're lying. That's an old crossing. Take them away, Molly. Come on, move, Moran. All right, you filthy bandit. Get away from me. Oh. Well, Pam, that was a smart piece of detective work. Oh, I'll say. How did you know about the cat's hairs? Jerry had them on his coat. Thank heaven. Thank heaven is right. It solved the case. Oh, I don't mean that, Jerry. I mean, thank heaven they were from the cat. Not that red-headed Francie. Girls... Here's what lovely Paulette Goddard said about you, your beauty, and that man of yours in the war. She said, He's fighting for you. It's up to you to look the part. Why not see how my three-minute care with Woodbury Cold Cream will help keep your skin smooth and alluring? I call it WBNC. That's short for Woodbury Beauty Nightcap. Try it. And lovely Veronica Lake says the same. These gorgeous stars prefer inexpensive Woodbury Cold Cream. For it's true, you can't give your skin better care at any price. And yet Woodbury costs just ten cents to a dollar and a quarter. And here's special help for women with extra dry skin. Help you need right now when winter weather can coarsen your complexion terribly. It's Woodbury Dry Skin Cream, and it costs just ten cents, twenty-five cents, fifty cents a jar. Try this exceptional cream. See for yourself how it helps eliminate those dry skin lines that tend to make a woman look older helps bring back supple softness to rough, dry skin. Ask for Woodbury Dry Skin Cream. again next Wednesday evening at the same time for another adventure of Mr. and Mrs. North. Pamela buys a turtle and a spy plot snaps in her face. For thrills and laughs, be sure to listen, won't you? This is Ben Grower saying goodnight for Woodbury, Woodbury, Woodbury For the skin you love to program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.